heading down to take a look at a boat that has a fuel tank that's leaking. It's a metal tank. Told me the boat's from 2004. It's an aluminum tank. What usually happens is either the bilge that it's sitting in got salt water in it and never got cleaned up so it ate a hole in the bottom of it or it got water inside the tank and ate a hole from the inside out and now it's leaking. So we have to go take a look and see if how we can get it out and how we can replace it. There's a couple different options. We could cut it out and get a new one made and put it in if that's an option. I don't know. It doesn't sound like there's a lot of room for the owner. We could cut it open and put a bladder inside of it, or we could, I don't know, I guess we could try to remove it and have it repaired, but that's usually not very viable because of the corrosion. Let's walk down here to Conk Harbor. Ooh, smells good here. Somebody's cooking something good. It smells like onion rings. So what kind of fuel tanks do you guys have in your boats? What are your favorite types of fuel tanks? I guess I have my thoughts on that, but why don't you share your thoughts with me and we will see what you come up with. I see him coming. He's right over there in that red shirt, coming down the dock. Down in the engine room here. The owner said that he was getting some water in the bilge and that something was leaking. He thought it was a sea strainer. So we just got here and first thing that we did notice is that there is a lot of water on the ground uh, or in the bilge, excuse me. See and you can kind of see it running. Yep, from right there. No um, bueno. Yeah. So I personally hate where people tell me that they have a water leak because usually what it is is they see standing water and they go i got a leak somewhere find it you can't see the water running or anything it could have been that while they were running a sink there was a leak it could have been draining there was a leak it could have just been two days ago when it rained there was a leak so you know you always have to do a little bit of detective work but in this case it was actually kind of nice because we've only been on the boat for about Fine. two or three minutes and uh, we can already see the water running from somewhere behind that strainer. So first thing we're gonna do is start removing some of the parts so we can get a better view to see is it uh, a loose hose maybe? Is there a break in the hose? Is there a break in the plastic? Uh, and just figure out if it's something that we can just isolate real quick today and then come back with new parts or is it something that we gotta fix now? So we'll see. So today we are replacing this brass elbow for this AC pump where they had a pinhole in the back. It's leaking water everywhere. So right now we're just gonna take the time, get this off, replace it, and then we're also gonna reattach this hose for the water maker. Good deal, a nice chilly morning. Yeah, honestly. Out here in the harbor. Got me wearing a hoodie, which is quite, <laughs> quite rare. I hope it's water repellent. I'm about to get wet today, bud. So right now we got the uh, water pump for the AC. It has brand new fittings on them. TJ's been cranking away at that. Let's check that out for the past half an hour. They were quite seized on there. So so right now I'm going to put that pump back, connect it back all up. Uh, TJ is gonna run to the shop real quick. We got some wrong fittings for the water maker filter. So he's gonna go get the right fittings for that. And then we'll get that all wrapped up and hopefully this boat will be good as new. And we'll go check out the uh, elbow that was leaking also. Yeah. You can see here, this little pinhole that was leaking, that was spraying everywhere. Little shot of the inside looks like some barnacles or something had their way with it and ate it up pretty good. Just that one spot just ate right through. Well, we've got a little bit of a mess. Fuel tank definitely is bad and it has leaked fuel into the bilge that surrounds the tank. Changing the tank is probably not an option because we would have to take apart both sides of where the tank sits are covered on the sides by flooring and then on top of the flooring is all kinds of cabinetry. We'd have to tear all that out. It's veneer and it's it would never be the same. So I think what we're looking at is cutting the top of the tank out and prepping it for a bladder, but I have a phone calls I need to make. A bladder company that I've used before, I don't even know if they're working right now because of the holidays. They may be shut down, but I'll give them a call and I'll send them the specs and some pictures that I took. If we have to pull that tank out, that's gonna be a tough job. It might be the kind of job because of the woodwork and the furniture and cabinetry, I might tell them, no, I'm not doing it. They're never gonna be happy with that furniture going back in there. And then not to mention the whole boat smells like diesel fuel and it's sloshed all over the floor and everything. So it's all, I hope they're not staying in there breathing all those fumes all day long. If we take the job, I'm sure you'll see more of it. Sorry, I couldn't take you with me, but the owners and their family were there and I never know how that's gonna go when you show up with a camera. So I didn't wanna go that route right off the bat. 
Just gonna run in here and wash my hands because I, again, because I still smell like, yeah, they stink like diesel fuel. So did you have some solutions for him since he doesn't keep the boat here, since he's traveling? They asked me about cheaper marinas and I'm like, well, really the only one is a city marina and that's probably booked. We talked about if they were going to leave and leave the boat here, then I would tell them just to take it to Buddy's and haul it out because it'd be cheaper to have it hauled out than it would be to keep it at a marina. Or if they're going to stay, they might take the boat out to one of the anchorages here if it's cheaper, which I would assume it is. I don't know. I don't really know that much about the cost of those anchorages. They have some research they have to do just like I do. They'll figure out what they're going to do, let me know, and I'll figure out what we can do and let them know, and then we'll come up with a plan based on that. You want to go in and say hi to Buddy? Yeah, let's go. Okay. We are continuing our uh, troubleshooting and fixing of their underwater lights. They have three underwater lights on uh, port side, center, and starboard side. Starboard side one is not coming on. A couple weird things, all electricity and wiring and stuff on a boat. So the one was not um, coming on. And anytime he turned it on, it would cycle through the colors, which is probably with the aluminum tech with the PLA ability, uh, red, green, white spectrum or whatever. So it's like when you turn it on, at first it'll start to cycle through the colors and you'll just be able to turn it on and off, utilizing a switch to select what color you want. The owner doesn't know where the switch is and he said that it, there was never a switch installed. I'm a little skeptical. I think it's somewhere on the boat. He just doesn't know where it's at. But what we do know so far, what we have done, is the starboard one was not working, so we turned the breaker on and got power. The very first thing that I noticed is that the fuse box, uh, I'll show you where the new one, not the fuse box, the inline fuse, uh, this one that you see right here was actually sitting down in the water there. So I went ahead yesterday and replaced all of that because I knew that needed to be done. The other inline fuses for the other sides are right over there. So this is a 10 amp fuse. As of right now, I'm only reading about a volt on there and the light is still not coming on. So my next step is that I'm going to check the ground. It's actually coming to it just to make sure that uh, that one volt, I might be only reading a volt there because of a voltage drop or uh, a bad ground that I'm utilizing back here for my test. So I'm gonna find a known good ground check for voltage if I see voltage is there, check to make sure that the ground is good. And then if all of those, if voltage is good, ground is good, I find the switch and I know that the wiring and everything leading up to the light is good, then we're just gonna have to determine that the light itself is bad. Don't think that's the issue because these things got installed like a year ago. This is just the first time that he's used it. The fact that the fuse box and everything or the uh, inline fuse holder was submerged is leading to a wiring issue. What do you think, AJ? I think it's gonna be easy. Yeah, don't use the E word around here. Let me know what you guys think or what you guys would have done. All right, so we've got AJ going in the hole all the way back there. Give you kind of a yeah. climb all the way back there to get to the right before the underwater light. Just kind of give you a little update on what's been going on. From the breaker, you have constant power. And then from a switch, you should actually have on a separate uh, inline fuse, you should have a switch that controls the PLA, the orange wire on these underwater lights. This was set up for a two wire configuration. Talking to the owner and then doing a little bit of uh, diving around the boat, they actually never had an underwater light switch. So uh, they just used the breaker to turn them on and off, which theoretically works, but it's bad because Breakers are not meant to be toggled on and off all the time. So it kind of makes them wear down prematurely. But what we did find is we had 24 volts coming to the fuse, but that, like I think I mentioned before, is that fuse holder was submerged underwater. So not only was the fuse and the fuse holder bad and corroded, it being underwater for probably the last six months, um, it all of that water and corrosion went up both sides of the wire. So we just kept cutting back splice after splice after splice until we got rid of all of the corrosion in the wire. And my reasoning for that is even though there is voltage present past those dirty splices, there could be an issue that when these lights turn on, they're rated for a 10 amp fuse. So they do pull a little bit of a current when they're running. That corrosion could have just had just enough resistance that uh, caused it to have a pretty serious problem. So we have been cutting out all of the bad splices and all the bad wire. And we are running a new two pair directly from behind the light to a known good source where we've gotten rid of all of the corrosion. We will have a completely brand new run 
without any corrosion, without any type of voltage drop. And if uh, the light still chooses not to come on, then we 100% know that it's the light and it's not the wiring, it's not the boat, it's not corrosion or anything like that. And we'll have them, um, because they're only, the lights are only like eight months old or so, uh, we will end up getting new lights under warranty. And then moving forward, right here on that little gunnel there, we're actually going to put a toggle switch, three inline fuses, some new wire on the PLA side for all of the underwater lights. So instead of using the breaker, uh, the owner can just come to the transom, flip the switch on and off until he gets the desired color, and then he can leave them on and off. And that is how they should be wired. And the switch will be at the transom, so it'll be easily convenient to see what color he wants. Uh, let me know if you guys ever had these kind of problems. Mm -hmm. what temperature is it? It's like 65. Ugh, gross. 68. A little bit better. Nice. But yeah, so uh, Chris is going to go on the outside, rough it up, to clean it out, get everything prepped and ready to go, drill some holes because there's no holes on that one. I'm going to be on the inside with my knees by my ears, and hopefully uh, this goes as smoothly as I think it will. So this is the actual. So we just got to put the thing in the thing and then seal it up and then keep the water on the outside of the boat. Put the thing in the thing. And then put the thing in the thing. So we got the through hole almost done. We put a generous amount of 5200 around the entire thing, around the washers, the nuts, the bolts, and the big bolt that's holding this uh, the through hole in. Now we just have to install the seacock onto it, put some leak lock around the threads, tighten it down, make sure everything works as normal. And then we should be good to go. We should be done with this boat. And uh, hopefully we won't be coming back here for leaks or anything like that. The seacock is in. We greased the seacock so it can flow a lot easier and you can turn the handle a lot easier. Everything looks good. Good to go. I like to keep uh, this grease fitting on the seacock itself just in case the owner wants to grease it in his own time so he knows where it is but other than that i think we're good to go here